Bombing a Shia mosque in Pakistan kills over 60, claimed by ISIS. Armin, do you think I can say the full name? Yeah, let's just say it from now. It's okay. Fine. So, um, on March 4th, a Shia mosque in Pasharwar in northern Pakistan was attacked during Friday prayers by a suicide bomber, leaving at least 63 dead and 196 injured. The Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attack. The chief of the Peshawar police stated that the police guarding the mosque had an encounter with two attackers. One of the attackers and one of the officers were killed during the ensuing crossfire. A senior police official added that the remaining attacker, quote, entered the mosque and started firing on the worshippers before detonating the bomb. Officers have said that the bomb was packed with five kilograms of explosive as, explosives as well as ball bearings, which caused massive casualties. Imran Khan, Pakistan's prime minister, in a tweet called the incident a, quote, cowardly terrorist attack. Reuters reported that even though the Pakistani Taliban is known for attacking the minority Shia community, they have distanced themselves from this particular attack. Okay, Ghost Bunny, I don't think you understand. Ghost Bunny is asking, why would Islamic State attack their own people? It doesn't make any sense. Why are they killing other Muslims? Oh, okay, my Ghost Bunny. goodness. Oh, my. Ghost Bunny, where have you been? These are Shias. These are the, their worst enemies. They would, like, they would, this is the greatest insult to them for you, for you to say that these are their people. I was actually, when you were describing the news, I was just thinking about the ISIS sh uh, shooter, like, when he's, like, shooting at, all these people inside the mosque how you know i can just imagine in his mind he doesn't have to worry about a single one of these bullets being justified or not because to them the, the shias again youtube this is not my word okay i'm just describing other people's word these are the to, to the isis shooter these are the worst of all people right like you cannot they they when you when you're shooting into a crowd of people praying inside a shia mosque he he has he doesn't have to in his mind he doesn't have to worry a single bit at all whether or not any of these kills are justified because they are praying inside a shia mosque right he feels so justified in every single kill he must be so, he must feel so honored and so proud of knowing that none of these bullets are going to waste. Because, you know, how more, how more, how much more confident can you be about whether or not you're killing the right people if you are inside a mosque of Shia prayers, according to a, like an ISIS shooter? It must, you know. For people who aren't familiar, can you explain what? the animosity is why the hatred because that's not obvious you know about oh, so what between the practices the shirk all that stuff so for someone who doesn't isn't familiar can you explain yeah i mean shias are the uh, are people who um have done to, according to you know maybe people from ISIS and many other uh, Sunni fundamentalist groups and arguably fundamentals of Sunni Islam, you know, these are, these have, these are people who are uh, doing the greatest harm to Islam and committing the greatest sins. So much of a sin that it's its own category, not even a sin, right? The, the most fundamental part of Islam is the, is the concept of Tawheed, which is the oneness of God. And, you know, there's nothing more damaging to Islam uh, when some people challenge that with a concept called shirk, which is mean knowing, bringing partners to God, bringing partners in worship to Allah under the disguise of Islam itself. You know what I mean? These Shias would be more hated by Sunnis, by some, by these Sunnis than us, for example. Because what we do, we don't call it Islam. These people are like, you know, changing Islam, corrupting Islam under the banner of Islam, right? How could, what could be more corrupt? What could be more evil than that in their minds, right? Um, 
like I think most people here in the live chat know that the the main enemies of ISIS are Shia Muslims. Like it's not atheists, it's not you know Western imperialism, it's not Zionism, it's not the Jews. The main enemies of ISIS is Shia Muslims. Uh, they consider the greatest corruption, the greatest insult to Islam. Right? So yeah. Yeah, what I thought was interesting about this is the fact, well, this was, this was, I am um, Islamic State in Khorasan. I can never say it right. How do you pronounce it the right way, Armin? Khorasan. Okay. And so there are some news reports that claim that this was carried out by an ISK member from Afghanistan. And then that person came across the border in, and went to Pasharwar to do this. So far, the authorities like are not really acknowledging if that's true, but I believe that's what ISK is claiming, which is interesting considering that there's been a lot of contention with Afghanistan and Pakistan with militants. And I think there is a contention right now partially because the government wants Afghanistan to release some of the Pakistan, um, uh, Pakistani Taliban members back to Pakistan, but they won't do it. Um, and uh, the, this is also one of the most deadly attacks that's happened on Pakistan in years. And now this issue is really starting to rear its head again, but this time with ISK. Yeah, that's insane. Um, it's not a it's not a fun time to be a Shia, by the way, in mm -mm. Pakistan right now. Like, if it's not ISK, it's even their own Pakistanis, their own. You know, these might be. So you're saying these are fighters coming in from Afghanistan? That's what I've seen reported. Hmm. But they're also getting like the Shias in Pakistan also are uh, getting it like. Are also getting a lot of attacks from the, their own population as well, their own Sunnis as well. Recently, it's gonna is is like yes, yes. You know, so you know, I'm I'm. It's it it, it might be part, like we are. You know, we are atheist republic is going to have to do a lot of focus on you know defending Shia Muslims apparently in the foreseeable future yes like you know we would have to do a lot of activism and bringing up attention to Shia. you know we get a lot of criticism by the way when we do that you know because like we we go after shia islam especially when we're talking about iran right but then all of a sudden in pakistan we we are in a position of defending shia muslims against the oppression that they're facing from Sunni Islam, for some Sunni Muslims, not all of them, for many Sunni Muslims. And people think that's, that's hypocrisy or that these, these Shia Muslims don't deserve the protection that, you know, or the awareness that we're trying to spread, right? Um, which is like, you know, it's only hypocritical if you don't understand what we're trying to do here, right? We're against Shia Islam, but we protect Shia Muslims, but we're in favor of protecting Shia Muslims against oppression. In the same way that we are against Sunni Islam, but we're in favor of protecting Sunni Muslims, for example, in Iran against the Shia oppression, right? But again, the, the mindset of like, oh, these Shias deserve what they're getting because they are also the same people who would do this in Iran, or even the Shia Muslims who are in Pakistan, for example, they this, you know, what comes around comes around, uh, what goes around comes around, or something like that. I don't know what they're saying, like, or karma or shit, stuff like that. Um, because these are the Shia, they say that these are the Shia Muslims in Pakistan who were oppressing Ahmadis, right? Um, this, none of these arguments work on us because, you, you know, most of these people, most of the people who have a collectivist mindset and they hold an entire population of people responsible for actions of some individuals and want to, you know, attribute guilt by association, right? And just you know, think that they that an entire group of people are deserving of uh, experiencing, you know, crimes like this and oppression like this just because other people within their own community have done something else. 
I, I feel like these people, people who are who think like this, I feel like sometimes I, I get the sense like their mind is broken. Like I, I think like sometimes people who ha think about um, justice and fairness uh, from a collectivist, you know, they have a collectivist mindset. I feel like they can't even comprehend the way we look at things with like us individualists where mm. we like look at every individual and what, you know, and what they mm -hmm. are, what they deserve and what they don't deserve when they hold an entire community responsible for an actions or the ideas that they have, or for the actions of some people in the community. I don't, sometimes I feel like we, we never, we, we don't get through to them because their brain just works on a collective, you know, and they can't even fathom why we are like, they can't even, relates to how we are we think about things as individualists right so it's like they're on a completely different wavelength so even when we explain things to them it's hard for them to even understand where we're coming from i don't know no i i totally get what you mean you, you put that really well because that's something like i i have a I have I have a really hard time in the opposite direction. I can't understand how someone could have such a collectivist mentality. Yeah, sometimes I feel like maybe we're just wired differently because it seems like most people are. I think like humans because they're social animals. Um, most of us are wired to think collectively. Like maybe like this is to like some extent, one hundred percent. Yeah, maybe it's, and it's maybe it's not a bug in the system. Maybe it's a feature because it uh, tribalism. You know, tribalism is was at least in nature when we were in civilized helped in our survival, and it's potentially um, maybe we are the bug, right? We are the bug that we were the bug when we were in civilized, and now we're the feature, right? But maybe we're just a there, there's a reason why we're the black sheep. It's not just because we had anything to. Um, do with it maybe like we were just wired differently maybe it's somewhat natural you know but if it is if that is the case if some people are just incapable of think not thinking collectively then we have to come up with other solutions beyond just introducing people to better ways of thinking right because maybe they can't maybe they can't be individualists so what do we do what what sort of activism do we um you know try to come up with that addresses the fact that no amount of spreading awareness is going to work on these people they just that's they just think collectively right so i don't know what the answer to that is but it's something that keeps me up at night anyways <laughs> well i think i i i think it is highly cultural how individualistic versus collectivistic we are there is a part of us that is innately going to be collectivistic because we need it for our survivals survival but if you just look at different profiles statistically you know em empirical evidence of how different countries um orient on a spectrum for uh, these kinds of values like individualism versus collectivism it's so heavily concentrated amongst different um kind of cultures and different areas that it, it it just seems highly highly social to me so that means that there's a, a lot of potential for change yeah okay i hope so <laughs> atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in india we have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.